So this is John Lean, uh, who was, uh, who was um, the man who set up the whale rescue group and a, a rescuer of whales from fishing nets. This is a scene where he's talking to his friend, his new friend, Peter, in Lord's Cove in 1970-something. Peter says, out of the blue and surprising, I was a whaler. Now then. Three years in B.C., three back here in Dildo before they shut her down in 72. Humpback, Finn, right whales, say, yes, sir. I don't tell many people that. People like yourself, not from here, that don't already know. It's a black eye. Something you did to make a living, to survive. It's a black eye now. How long have you been here, John? In Newfoundland. John says, just shy of 10 years. So you knows, John, you knows we can be a hard people to love. John says, whalers? No, by Newfoundlanders. Especially to people like you, scientists, professors, mainlanders alike. We've got endless patience and sympathy for anyone and anything, unless it's our neck on the line, our house, our family, our chance to feed them. You should know is all, John. You should know whose roof you're sleeping under. John says, my father had a firm. My first job was raising chickens. I named them like pets and then butchered them myself, sold them around town. I was eight. I know, Peter. I know whose roof I'm sleeping under. Peter smiles. You ever see a proper whaler, John? The vessel? John shakes his head. I was junior crew, eh? Oh, when I was 18, I, went to f I wanted to fire the cannon, but who didn't? They'd harpoon him with the explosive tip, and she'd take that Jesus big chunk. Death blow, quick. Me and two other fellas then, we were on the hoses, the air hoses, one through the mouth and the other through the arsehole. Blow them up, and they can take on some air, I'll tell you. Let them float them with a boy until the time comes to gather them for sure. You see the size of them then, when they're floating like that? The strength and the power of them, even though they're dead. Maybe because they're dead. Nothing like setting yourself against something to make you feel the full wrath of it. Fishing the years after it all? Boy, I couldn't get a clean night's sleep on the water. But to be thinking there was one coming up on us, Angry. As it should be, I suppose. John says. I never set out to rescue that first whale. That very first one. I was just there to record it. I was clearly in distress, like those pilot whales in Green Bay. And so, just like I did with them, I was just there to watch it and observe it. And I thought I made th that clear, but this fellow, this fisherman, I forget his name now, he, he thought I was there to help. Heard I was into whales, whatever that means. And that's why he called. The net wrapped around both flukes, a good three turns, all in through the mouth everywhere. A mess. His father had told him to shoot it. Boom down through the blowhole, like he'd done himself before, like they'd all had done. Satisfying somehow, something to do when there's nothing else to be done. Rage and frustration and fear, like you said, real fear, these fellas. Lifetime on the sea, and they won't admit to it, but some of these guys were ice cold with fear. You understand that, Peter. This humpback, he was a big fella, the size of him up close, but he was so tired. Been there three days or something by that point, so he was just barely there, you know? each breath a struggle, and so, and so I told this frightened fisherman to bring the boat in closer. <laughs> I, told, I told him to bring it in closer, and the look on his face, Peter, oh Christ, closer, I said, and I thought, I thought he's going to shoot me, never mind the whale, but he did it. I must have looked like I knew what I was talking about, because he went and he did it, he brought that boat in closer. Good and close, and we were all but up on the back of the whale then, and then the whale, he just, he just rolled on his side. We spooked him or something. He rolled on his side, and when he did, his, his eye came right up out of the water. This thing the size of a softball, wet and gray and huge, and uh, I'd never seen anything like that. 
this I. And Some would call me foolish for saying it, but I'll say it. He was looking at me right in the eye. He was looking me right in the eye, and it was like he was saying, it's okay. It's too late for me. There's nothing to be done here. Thanks for trying, but, but you can let me pass and let me be at peace. And be at peace yourself. But us humans, eh, Peter? Us foolish humans, we never let go that easy.